Now, before you get seated, it's a very special day for women in the house. If you are happy, say amen. All right. I want to count from one up to three, and I want us all to celebrate our mothers, our daughters, our sisters in the house. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Make some noise for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for our mothers. Thank you, Jesus, for our women. Thank you, Jesus, for our daughters. Thank you, Jesus, for our sisters. Thank you for the gift you have given unto us. We thank you for this great gift in the church. We thank you for this great gift in the nation. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you are going to empower them to fire the water in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the believers say, Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor if she's a woman, tell her happy women day. Come on, I don't hear you. Tell her happy women day. It's a very, very special day for them. And would you please appreciate the praise and worship team? They are doing a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. Our women praise and worship team. And I declare that this is an international team from ICC Dodoma. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Aren't you glad you are in the house of the Lord this morning? Once again, happy Women's Day. Amen. God bless you. I really thank God this morning for such a privilege he has given me to stand before you. And uh, I would love to send my appreciation to uh, the leadership of women, to Mama Pastor and Pastor and all the women in the house for allowing me to, to represent you today. Uh, it's such an honor before the Lord and before you to stand before you today. And I am not taking it lightly. I really thank God for this grace he has given me this morning. If you believe, say amen. Amen. And on this very special day, uh, God has given me a grace to share a word of God with you uh, from the book of Matthew chapter number 15. That, is be, that will be the scripture I'll be preaching from, even though we have some other scriptures from other books, but I'll be focusing and I'll be concluding my message from the book of Matthew chapter number 15 from verse 21 to verse 28. The book of Matthew chapter number 15 from verse 21 up to 28. If you're there, say amen. The Bible says, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre in Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that, from that uh, vicinity came to him. Cry out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not, did not answer a word. So... His disciples came to him and argued him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and to toast into the dogs. Verse number 27, yes, it is. Lord, she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. The last verse, then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted and her daughter 
was healed at that moment. Praise God. Now from this scripture I've just read, I'll be preaching and teaching from the title, Woman, Great is Your Faith. That will be my title this morning, Woman, Great is Your Faith. But before I take you further from this scripture I've just read, I want you to turn with me in the book of Levit Leviticus, chapter number 6 and verse 13. Leviticus, chapter number 6. I want you to turn with me. I want us to read the theme of the day. Leviticus 6 and verse 13. The Bible says, The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Now, in, in my introduction, before I take you to the book of Matthew chapter number 15, I wanted to present to you the theme of the day. Actually, this is the theme that it is guiding us in the women's day that the fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. And I was asking myself after reading this theme, why is the Lord asking the women to guard the altar? That they must make sure the fire is keeping on burning in the altar continuously. And as for me, I know this is the theme. If you, you, you read the book, you find out um, it, speaks, and it speaks about uh, the fire in the altar. And as you all know, in our church in TAG, we are in the 13 years of revival. So I was asking myself, why is the Lord asking women to make sure that the fire is continuously burning in the altar without ceasing. So I kept on asking myself this question. Then I came to realize that the Lord is asking women to be the altar guider because he has placed a gift, something very unique inside women. If there, um, if there are some women in the house, let me hear say amen. He has placed something very unique inside women. That is the reason you see now the Lord has trusted them and he has given them a task. He has given them a duty as women to make sure that the fire in the altar net, it doesn't go out. The fire in the altar keep on burning because they have something that have been given by God uh, that is very unique because they have given this that is the reason God has given them this mandate if you believe say amen now I want you to understand something very important why does God has given the grace to women it is because as I've said before if you, you read the book of Genesis chapter number 2 from verse 15 and verse 18 you find some things I want you to show I want, I want you to see there and then I'll flow with my message the book of Genesis chapter number 2 from verse uh, 15 to 18. The Bible said, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to walk in it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but, if, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat, you shall surely die. The Lord God said, verse 18, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. Now, if you go in the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter number 2, that is where you see now God is placing a vision to a man. He's giving a task to a man. And the Bible say, after giving that vision, after giving that task to a man, now you see after God has given that task to a, to a man, he's he is declaring now it is not good for this man to be alone. 
So as I've said before, God has trusted woman with this great mandate because for women we have been given, uh, God has placed vision on us. But for the vision to be accomplished, we need a woman beside us. That is the reason that you see people say behind every successful man, there is a great woman. So I want to encourage my dear sisters and mothers and daughters in the house that it doesn't matter how down you look on yourself but God has something unique in your life. God has placed a gift of nurturing in your life. That is the reason you read in the book of Genesis chapter number 2. After God has given a vision to Adam, now he is Decide, he's declaring that it is not good for a man to be alone because he knew that Adam, he have the big picture, but for that picture to be fulfilled, he need a helper. And that's the reason God has given us our mothers. That's the reason God has given us our sisters. That's the reason God has given us our daughters because they have that gift of nurturing things. It is true, women, we have been given vision. We have big pictures. But mothers, but women, they are able to connect those small pieces to a big pictures. That is the reason God himself declares that it is not good for this man to be alone. And I will make him a suitable helper so when we say the fire must keep on burning in the altar i want you to understand as a woman god has trusted you with this thing because as we are talking about altar there is an altar in your house there is an altar in your marriage there is an altar in your church there is an altar at your workplace. Wherever you are, God is commanding you that you have to make sure the fire never get out of the altar. The fire continuously to burn in the altar because as a mother, you have been given that ability to nurture, to embrace, and to make sure whatever that God has planted, it will come to pass successfully. If I have women in the house, let me hear you shout, Amen. So from this point, from these scriptures I've just read, I want to, to give some few de definitions. Who is a woman? Who is a woman? Number one, a woman has ability to nurture. Number one, woman has ability to nurture. As I've said before, in that book of Genesis chapter number two, when you see now God is creating Adam and he's creating a man, He's giving him a task, but after giving that task to a man, he's there realizing that he will not do it alone. He will need to make it on his own. That is the reason he's giving a suitable helper because a woman has ability to nurture. But number two, a woman has ability to help. A woman has ability to help. Number three, a woman has ability to give life. Praise God. A woman has ability to give life. Now, when I say a woman has ability to give life, I want you to understand. For women, God has given us seed. But for that seed to produce, you need a womb of a woman. For that thing to be, for that vision that you see to be a really and tangible thing. And when I say about seed, I am not talking about producing children only, but I can, I can relate. It can be even the seed of your vision, the seed of those things that you are planning to do in your life, the, th the seed of the, of the great things that as a man you think God has placed in your heart. You have that seed. For that seed to grow, you need a woman to stand beside you and to help you to make accomplishment of that thing because God has given woman ability to give life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that God has given us a precious gift. These women we have in our church. They are the special gift from God himself. But number four, woman has ability to embrace and to protect. 
what woman can do. Woman has ability. A woman has ability to embrace and to protect. So that is the reason. Now for my perception, that is the reason I think God has given them a mandate to make sure that the fire in the altar is kept on burning continuously. Church of God, let me encourage you today. Women of God, let me encourage you today that God has trusted you with this fire in the altar, in your families, in your marriages, at your workplace, wherever you are. God has trusted you with this thing and he's, 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 he has trusted you because he knows that inside of you, you have ability to make the fire burning continuously. If you believe, say amen. Now, let me take you back to the book I've just read, the book of Matthew, chapter number 15. From that verse, there is a woman from verse 21, there is a woman, the Bible names her as a Canaanite woman. And when I was reading these verses, I started meditating about this woman. Then I came to a point of learning some things about this woman. Because the Bible say, uh, the book of uh, Matthew chapter number 15, please. Chapter number 15. The Bible say, living at a place, at that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, cried out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed. Now I'm starting looking at this woman. I, I, I call her a great and warrior woman of faith. Now the Bible says Jesus was walking. And if you find out very carefully, Jesus was walking not because he went to visit that woman, but he was just passing by. And that woman saw Jesus. And the Bible says immediately she cried out and said, Lord have mercy on me for my daughter. So you see something I want you to learn, number one. I want to learn for this woman. She was desperate not for herself. She was desperate for her generation. She was de desperate for her daughter. She saw Jesus coming on her way and she screamed like, Lord have mercy on me because my daughter is demon possessed. I want to encourage woman that, that, that as, as this woman did in the book of Matthew chapter number 15. So God is expecting us, expecting you as women to stand on your position and to cry out not only for yourself, but to cry out for your generation. Because if you not do so, men, we are not given that task. We are not blessed with that thing. So number one thing, I, I, well, when I look here, I see that she was not a selfish woman. You know, nowadays, we are doing a lot of things as women. You see the conferences of women. You see the, 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 a lot of things that are going on outside about women. But most of them are dealing with just them, with just them, with just them. So the world is taking us back. To not to stand in our position as women, but is trying to, to take us to be selfish. But what I'm learning from this woman, she was not a selfish woman. She stood in her position to stand and cry out for our daughter. And this is my cry out this morning. That the Lord will raise a generation of women who are not selfish. Of women who are not selfish. Who they will be ready to stand and to say, Lord, as a woman you have placed me here i am ready to fight not for my own not for my good not because of what i have but for my generation for my daughters for my sons for my husband for my church and for my nation because god has given ability for women to nurture things to the great accomplishment. And I, I encourage a woman this morning in the service in the name of Jesus. That the Lord is calling you back to the place of prayer. Is calling you back to the place of submission. Is calling you back to your place and to stand and to say, Lord, it doesn't matter what the words say. But as a Canaanite woman, I will stand on my position and I will make sure that my generation is going to heaven with me my husband is going to heaven with me my church the fire in the outer in the church shall not never cease because you have given me grace to stand in a position 
So number one, when I say Canaanite woman, she was not a selfish woman. We have a lot of workshop nowadays, but it's only me, me, I can do. Me, me, I can do. Me, me, I can do. But my dear mothers, my dear sisters, my dear daughters, let me submit to you this morning. The ability that God has placed into your heart, into you, has placed ability to help the vision, the big visions that he has, he has put unto men. He has given you grace to nurture things and to make them happen. We can have big dreams, but we can't do it without women. We cannot do it without women because we have been given the seed, but the power to produce is on women. So these Canaanite women, the quality number one, she was not selfish. She was ready to be embarrassed. She was ready to stand. She was ready to say, Lord, as long as you are passed on my way, I don't care if you are coming for me or for somebody else, but as long as here I am and I see your presence, I won't let you go until my daughter get home. And I pray into our church that the women of this church they will carry that spirit in the name of Jesus. They will carry that spirit in the name of Jesus. Standing on the gap and interceding for somebody else. You know, it is something else to pray for yourself. But it is maturity when you stand in the gap and interceding for somebody else. If it is not for women, nobody else can do it better. I say it again. If it is not for women, nobody else can do it better. Because God has given you that ability. You know... I don't know for other men, but I, I think for, for women, God has given us, we are, sometimes we are too serious and we are too composed of ourselves. I want you to understand when the Bible says a Canaanite woman, if you read the Bible, you find out that this woman was not a Jew woman. She was a Greek woman somewhere. So that is the reason you, you see, she just seeing Jesus, he's passing by. He didn't went to her. The Bible doesn't say that. But he was just passing by. And she said, Lord, have mercy on me. If it was a man, he couldn't do such a thing. He couldn't do such a thing. Because we have this attitude. We have this composing attitude. We have this, uh, God has given this. We, 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 want to, we want to put things in order. We want appointments. We want some things to go the way we want them to go. But for a woman, if there is a case, she can stood and, and enter anywhere, anytime, as long as she wants God to intervene. That is the reason you see a Canaanite woman. She's just stepping out and cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. My daughter is demons possessed. Number two, what I am learning for this woman, she was aggressive enough to break the protocol. She was aggressive enough to break the protocol. Protocol are good, but sometimes when things are not going the way they're supposed to go in your life, I need a just one woman who be bold enough to, 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 to stand up and to go and, protocol some pro, and break some protocol for God to intervene in her situation. If you read the Bible very carefully, you will find out that in, there, in, 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 in verse number 23, the Bible say, 22, the Bible say, a Canaanite woman that uh, she, she crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. Jesus did not answer a word. Now, I want you to, to have a picture. I say she was aggressive enough. Have you ever imagined you are going and asking for something? You are praying and you receive no answer. What will you do? But what I'm learning from this woman, she was aggressive enough because when she she, 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 she called on Jesus at the, first, at the first time the Bible said, Jesus did not hans, answer a, a word. So he kept quiet, but she kept on insisting that I need grace. I need mercy. I need 
My daughter is demons possessed. So I want you to understand as a woman, God has given you grace, has trusted you with these things. Sometimes you need to be aggressive to make sure that it doesn't matter. You don't have to go with moods. You have to make sure it doesn't matter whether I feel like doing it or I don't feel like doing it. Whether I feel like the other side which I'm praying, God is listening or I don't feel like he's listening. But I know he is faithful and he is able. That is the reason, that is the reason enough to make you keep on begging for mercy for God. So she was too aggressive. She stood before the Lord. She said, Lord, have mercy on me. Jesus didn't answer anything. But she kept on insisting that I need a help from God. But number three, what I'm learning from this woman, she was focused. Praise the Lord. She was focused. In the, in the verse number, in the verse number 20, 23, the Bible said, Jesus answered, Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and argued him and said, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. Now you see, she said, Jesus, son of David. And Jesus didn't answer a word. But here are the disciples now coming and saying, send her away for she is keeping, she keeps crying after us but she didn't say oh disciples she say Jesus for, for me I see this as a distraction I see as a distraction but you see her the reaction now see the reaction she didn't answer those disciples but she kept on insisting that Jesus she had that ability to focus in one go. She that had ability to see all I want is Jesus. It doesn't matter what other people around him they say. I didn't come to meet them. I came to meet Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, let me submit to you that sometimes the word has a way of, of taking us out of our target. But as a, this Canaanite woman, I want to encourage a certain woman in the house of the Lord that it doesn't matter what is happening in your way. Just focus on the target. If Jesus is all you want, then focus. Forget about these other stuff because they have come just to get, take you out of your way. They said, take her away for she is keeping crying after us. But in real sense, he didn't cry for them. He cried for Jesus. My prayer to women in the house this morning. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. It doesn't matter what the word says about your marriage. It doesn't matter what the word says about your children, your sons and daughters. It doesn't matter what the marriage says. What the word says, what the word tried to do is just to take you out of your way so that you lose focus and forget the place of your calling. The place of your calling, God has placed you there to be a helper to that man, to be a helper to that altar, to be the helper to that church, to make sure things happening the way they're supposed to be. Don't lose focus when you see that this is the goal I want to achieve make sure that you are continuously asking and continuously crying out until you see the given results of your prayer in the name of Jesus if you believe say amen, amen. she was a woman who was focused she was so focused she was so focused that's the reason now I want you to look at something in these coming verses. The Bible says. He answered Jesus now. After, after the disciples trying to take her away. The Bible says Jesus answered. I was sent only to the lost ship of Israel. Then the woman came. Knelt before him. Lord help me. She said. If you read the Bible. You find out here Jesus was still operating in the Old Testament rules. That is the reason in the book of John somewhere, uh, the, the, John says he came for his own and they rejected him. 
His own was Jew. And I told you before, this woman, she was not a Jew. She was just a, uh, the Bible called, it, called her a Canaanite woman. But she, she was a Greek woman from somewhere else. But when she saw Jesus, she was ready to give up her dignity. dignity. She was ready to sacrifice herself and to say, it doesn't matter if he came for me or he didn't come for me. But I will go because I know there is a help to that man. You know, we are in African families. We all know. Mothers are the only people who are ready to stand out and sometimes to go outside and to ask something for their children to eat. Only mothers they can do that. It is kind of shame sometimes. But I don't think if there's a man who will just wake up in the morning and say, let me go and find sugar for Mama Fulani for my children. We are all living in African life. We know this life. But mothers, they have that boldness inside of them and say, it doesn't matter how he will see me, how he perceive me, but Mama Fulani, hold it. I need a sugar for my children. Because inside of them, because of that gift of giving life, they know what it is. To, what it is. They know and they feel the pain. So they are ready to stand and to do anything to rescue the generation. My prayer, this spirit will come back to the women in the house in the name of Jesus. My prayer to you, to women of ICC, that this spirit will come back to you in the name of Jesus. You stand in the gap and intercede. You stand in the gap and, doesn't, and say it doesn't matter what is happening on my way. I'll go and I'll take it what I need. Then the Bible says, Jesus answered him, I was not sent only to the lordship of the Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, please help me. She said, he replied, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss to the, uh, it to the dogs. Yes, it is. Now, he's, she has been disappointed at the very first place. She didn't give up. At the second, she didn't give up. You see, at the third time, she didn't give up. Fourth time, she, she's keeping on insisting. I was just, when I was reading this text, I was just me meditating. What if that was a man? It was so easy for a man to just walk away and say, it's okay. You don't know me? I don't know you. Take your time. But for this woman, because of that gift that God has given unto her, she said, Lord, have mercy on me. In the last verse, verse 28, the Bible says, Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is being granted. Not because she deserved, but because as a woman, she stood in her place and made sure that whatever she wants for the Lord, it will be granted. And the Lord cried out, Say, Woman, great is your faith. Even though Jesus he said himself, he, he was not sent to the lost ship outside of Israel, but he had to break some protocol and to go and touch that woman. My prayer to a certain woman this morning, the hand of the Lord, it doesn't matter where you are. It will come and touch you. It doesn't matter what the protocol are. It doesn't matter as long as you have hunger, you are hunger. You have been waiting eagerly to receive from the Lord. May the hand of the Lord touch you and your generation, if you believe, say amen. Amen. And the Bible say, Jesus said your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Her daughter was healed at that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude my message, I want to submit to you something very important. That God has given grace to women. That is the reason He's calling them back to this great duty that they have to make sure the fire in the altar kept burning continuously. Kept burning continuously. Kept burning continuously because they have ability to nurture. They have ability to protect. They have ability to embrace. They have ability to make things happen on their way. Let me conclude by saying this. We are living in the world whereby 
we have been categorized, women have been categorized as just a little thing, just a thing that it doesn't matter. But if you read the Bible, I've said in the book of Genesis, chapter number two, if you go in just chapter number three, you find out when the serpent was talking, she was not, he was not talking to a man. He was talking to a woman because a woman, she was right there at the place where God, give, give, uh, God had given Adam the instruction. What does it mean? The woman, she's the keeper of the instruction that we receive from God. So sometimes the word tries a, try, try a lot to make us to look down on ourselves, to think maybe we want to compete, we have to compete with somebody. We want to compete with men. No, you don't have to do all those things because just for being a woman, there is a very special divine mandate that God has given you just for being a woman, just for standing in your position as a woman, just being a woman, that is your power. You don't need anything else to empower you because being a woman, that is already a power that God has given unto you. You don't, be, you don't need anything else in addition to make you to look super. No, you are just super the way you are because God has created you in his, in his own image and his own likeness. So you are super because you are like God. Let me encourage you, women. You don't have to fight with anybody. You don't have to be famous to be who you are. God wants you to be. You don't have to have many followers. You just be to stand. You just need to stand and to be there where God wants you to be. And He planted when to be. That is when you become a super woman. Because you are in your position. Let me encourage you, my sisters. Do not compare. Do not compare yourself. With other things. Do not compare yourself with what the word says. Compare yourself with the word of God. Compare yourself with what the word of God says about you. Compare yourself with what the word says about your life. Compare yourself with what the word of God says about that given mandate that God has placed you here on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say for the whole church, and for us, as man, God has given these women for us as a gift. We have to embrace them. We have to protect them. We have to respect them. Because when we do so, that is when we make them to release that ability, that hidden God ability that has given unto them. We make them to act, to go extra mile. We make them to do extraordinary things that we have never imagined before. When we respect them, when we love them, and when we give them all the care that they deserve. My prayer to somebody this morning, that from this message, the Lord will help us as men, will help us as a church to recognize and to embrace this great gift he has given us. Thank you very much. And this is the word of God for today. Thank you, Mama. God bless you. Amen.